Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to create our first program in Allen Bradley's Connected Components Workbench. And then we're going to go through how the Micro 800 line of PLCs actually scans and executes the program. Now we're not actually going to put any instructions in our program, but don't skip over this video. You're going to think at first, well, I want to go ahead and learn how to program actual instructions, make lights turn on and off. Well, actually we will make a light turn on and off, but this exercise right here will show you how a PLC scans. And the people who stick to this video till the end will have a much better grasp of how a PLC operates and they'll be able to catch on to programming much faster. Before we get started, please hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. Any questions you have or suggestions for videos, put those down in the comments because your comments this week could easily be next week's video. We're gonna start in the CCW software and we're gonna click new. And if you have a start page, it's right here. Or you can go over this far left icon right here, creates a new project, or you can go to file and then new. All of those do exactly the same thing. And we're just gonna call this a blank program. And then we're gonna go into controllers. We have a micro 820, and the part number of ours is 2080-LC20-20QWB. And we are gonna be using version 12. So we'll add that to our project. And this is kind of how it comes up by default. And as nice as this pretty little picture or the PLC here is, it takes up way too much of the screen. So if you'll hit this double up arrow right here, we'll go ahead and hide that where we can kind of see the meat of our controller configuration down here. And our general tab right here, the biggest thing that I would say is name your PLC something. It's probably not that important early on when you're learning, but when you are actually putting PLCs out on a network, this is what they come up as when you're browsing RS links. So if you have 20 Micro 820 PLCs out there and they all say Micro 820, it's gonna be really difficult to figure out which one's which. So we'll just call this one our blank PLC. And just quickly going through some of the other tabs, we have memory here, which once we build it, it'll show how much memory we're using. Later on, we'll talk about some startup programs and some fault handling. Here's your serial port configuration. And we have a video that talks about how you actually can connect to on the Micro 820 over serial if you're having trouble connecting over ethernet. And then mainly we have our ethernet configuration and we do need to configure this. If you're using our trainer, then it already has an IP address assigned. But if you download this program without configuring this IP address, then you'll set this back to DHCP and you'll need to assign an IP address again. So we're gonna configure it 192.168.1.10. And this is the default IP address that your trainer came with. And then when we click on subnet, it's gonna come up with 255, 255, 255, And that will be fine for our application. And that's really all the configuration we need to do here on our PLC. Now, if you ever need to get back to this, if we go ahead and close this tab out, we'll just double click right here on our root PLC in the left pane and it'll bring that back up where you can get back to it. Now we're gonna go and create our first program. And to do that, we're gonna right click programs and we're gonna have options of creating a structured text program, a ladder program, and a function block program. And we're gonna start with a ladder program. And then we'll go ahead and double click on Prog1 and we have a single rung with nothing in it. And we are done. We're going to download this program now. If you're not sure how to download your PLC, just go down in the description. I have a link to the whole series. It'll show you how to configure your PC to connect over ethernet. Also, you can do the serial and how to actually download your program. Well, we're gonna hit the download button here and then we're gonna browse to our PLC. Click OK. And it's gonna ask us if we wanna download with project values or just download. We're gonna download with project values. All right, and here's the big warning. It's saying that downloading with the current ethernet settings will result in a disconnection from the controller. Continue with download of ethernet settings. Now, if you did not put the ethernet settings in, you wanna hit no now, and you'll need to fix that in your program. But we did put ours in, so we'll go ahead and click yes. All right, and the download has succeeded. But you notice we're now offline. It says disconnected. 
So we're gonna need to connect to it. And the reason that it happened is because we changed those ethernet settings and it takes you offline if you do that, but it's gonna connect right back up. And one thing when it takes you offline in the middle of that download is you don't end up switching it to run mode. It doesn't give you that prompt. So if we double click on our root PLC again, then right here it says we are in program mode. We're gonna switch that to run mode. Okay, and our PLC is running now. One thing I should have pointed out earlier is if your run light is flashing, then you're in program mode. If your run light is solid, then you're in run mode. And we're gonna spin our trainer around now where you can see the lights and the buttons on it. And we are gonna go and double click on global variables. And these are our inputs and outputs. So we're going to just drag this out a little bit where we can see it now. And one thing that stumps me a lot in the CCW software is that the outputs in the list are first and then the inputs. And just naturally, I'm usually clicking the inputs first and then the outputs. I don't know why exactly they're in this order, but they are, so just pay attention. Mainly this means it's an input or an output and it's on the embedded module. It's on the base of the Micro 820 and it's a digital output and this is output zero. Then one, two, three, four, and on through six. Same thing here, it's an IO on that base unit. It's a digital input and zero down through 12. And also you have your analogs down here. We're gonna play with those in a later video. Right now we're gonna focus up here on these digital inputs and we're going to press button one on our trainer. And now we have a checkbox here on digital input four. If you don't recall in our wiring enough to get started exercise, input four is button one, five is button two, six is button three, and seven is button four, and eight is switch one. We skipped those first four because they'll be using those analog exercises later. But when we press button one, we get this checkbox. Now, I don't like the checkbox particularly in Connected Components at Forkbench because everywhere else in Rockwell software, it's a one or a zero. So just start thinking about an empty checkbox being a zero and a checked checkbox as being a one. Because I hope eventually as they massage this Logix view, which is designed to look more like Studio 5000, Eventually these checkboxes will turn into ones and zeros. But there's input four, if we press button two, there's input five, we press button three, there's input six, we press button four, there's input seven, switch eight. So we can read inputs with a blank program. But the question is, can a blank program actually do anything? Well, the same as it is reading its inputs if we put a checkbox in the logical value that normally our ladder logics would be writing to, we're gonna get output zero on. We put a checkbox in output one, the yellow light is turning on. We put a checkbox in two, we're gonna get a red light, and three, we're gonna get a blue light. So what is the point of this exercise? The point of this exercise is to start talking about how a PLC actually scans and executes code, and mainly to show that the output instructions or whatever you're using in the ladder logic doesn't actually write to the output. And so we're gonna go through this diagram, and really you wanna become really familiar with this diagram as this is your basic PLC scan cycle in a Micro 800 PLC. Well, PLC is going to read its inputs. Now that is gonna be what you're seeing on these LEDs. So we press button one, we see an indicator on input four. So that is out over here. It's gonna read those. It's gonna update these global variables. So these are the global variables right here that we're talking about. So it is updating these digital inputs. Now I only showed one input and one output here just to keep this diagram fairly uncomplicated. But so once it reads these, then it's gonna come over here and it's gonna execute its ladder code. Now what it is reading here, like say we have an instruction that is looking at input four, it's not gonna be looking at this physical input over here. It's gonna be looking at this global variable here. And this is gonna be an important thing 
later on as you understand program flow and try to troubleshoot your program. Now, once it's done with all of its program, then it's gonna come over here and it's gonna update its outputs. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take what's in this global variable output, these right here, these digital output, and it's going to update the physical outputs based off of. Then it's gonna come around, it's gonna do a little overhead here, which we're not gonna concern ourselves too much with. This is where like communications with Connected Components Workbench and some various things like that go on and then it's gonna do it again. And it's gonna do this in a matter of milliseconds. So it's not a long process. I mean, in the time you can blink your eye, it's probably done it 10 times at least. I don't know how quickly it takes to blink your eye. So let's just go through this scan cycle of our blink program. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna come around and it's gonna read its physical inputs. Now there's a lot of different ways that people state this, you know, whether it be that I have voltage or that my input's on, but I like, do I have current? Because if I ask myself, do I have current? It says that my 24 volt power supply is good. I have a continuous path from my power supply to one side of my push button. My button is good. I have a continuous path from the other side of my button to the terminal on the PLC. My input circuit in the PLC is good. And most importantly, and most overlooked is I also have COM0 connected to the minus of my 24 volt power supply. So we have 24 volt, our button is not pressed, so we do not have current. So it's gonna put a zero in the box for input four. Then it's gonna execute its program, which in our case has nothing in it, and it's gonna go over here and update its outputs. Now, when it's updating its outputs, it does not care anything about what happened in this PLC program. All it's gonna look at are these global variables. And right now this global variable for output zero has a zero in its box. So it is going, so it is going to open its switch. Now, yes, this is an imaginary switch because I know there's transistors and everything, but this is a lot easier to represent. And that will make light one be all. So what happens if we press button one? When we press button one, we see this checkbox. Now, I'm not gonna hold this button because my finger will get really tired and I need it to point at things. But here it is with that button pressed. So again, it will just go around. And it is, remember, it's going around super fast. Can update its input. So we ask, do I have current? Well, my 24 volt will have power to my button. My button's pressed. And yes, we have current flow. So it's gonna put a one in input four's box. Then it's gonna execute its program, and then it's gonna go over here and update its outputs. Again, it doesn't care about the program. It's just looking at this one box in the global variable for output zero, and it says I have a zero here, so my switch is open, my light is off. Now, what happens if we go up here and we check this box by output zero? We already know that our light turns on, but let's go through how the program scan would actually work. So we're gonna read our inputs. Button one is not pressed, because my finger's not on it, not even imaginary. And so if we do not have current flow, we're gonna get a zero there. It's gonna execute its program here. Then this output is gonna go look at this global variable box, and it has a one in it. So it is gonna close our imaginary contact in our output, and it'll turn on light one. Now one important thing to realize is I checked this box, or I put a one in this box. If nothing goes in here and puts a zero or unchecks that box, then it's gonna continue to remain a one. Hopefully you have that down, but while we're at it, let's go through the last one here. Let's say that button one was pressed, so I'm gonna press button one, and button one is pressed, so we do have current flow. It's gonna write a one to input four. It's gonna do its program, which has nothing in it, and then it's going to go over here to its outputs to update them, and output zero is gonna come and look at this global variable box. It has a one in it. It does not care what's in this box. It doesn't care what's in any of the boxes. It only cares about what's in input zero's box. It says I have a one, so it goes and closes its little imaginary switch. And that's the basics of the scan cycle. The big takeaways here are one, make sure you realize this three-step process and then looping back around. This is this program scan that this PLC is gonna do a thousand times a second or however fast it does it. And then realizing 
that your PLC inputs and outputs are not directly tied to that program. So we're gonna go through some bit instructions and really you're gonna think, okay, this one probably wasn't that important until later on. And we're gonna start going through how to actually sequence machines. And we're gonna to have to actually have multiple steps and things like that. And then that's when this scan cycle is gonna be so important, not only for writing PLC programs, but also for troubleshooting them to figure out, okay, this happens and this happens and this happens in that millisecond time. So again, please like this video and subscribe. We put out at least one video a week, sometimes more. And if you happen to make some money off of our videos, but you're not using any of our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.